crispy. What is going on guys? It's been a while. Now this video is going to be a bit different today from my other standard reviews. It's actually going to be an unboxing video as I just got the figure today. So I'm going to just go along with what I see and explain to you all the accessories and everything because I'm literally just going to open it right now. I'm excited to finally own this. It's one of my grail figures for sure. I've been after it for a while. Big fan of the game and I'm so happy to have a um, figure of this guy. Uh, for those who aren't familiar with the Shin Megami Tensei series, this is Raido Kuzunoha, which is the protagonist from the PlayStation 2 game Devil Summoner. There are actually two games in the series, but um, he looks the same in both games. And I'm going to give a little background on the character. Uh, Raido Kuzunoha is a descendant of the Kuzunoha clan, and he's a student of the Yumizuki High School who is trained in the art of the Devil Summoner. Now he's the newest one to bear the Kuzunoha name, so it's his duty now to protect the capital from demons of the Dark Realm and ensures the supernatural world is kept in check. And he also runs a detective agency that investigates the type of supernatural events that go on in the city. He wields a pistol, as you can see here, and he also has a samurai sword, but his main true power is to summon demons and control them at his will and he uses them as allies in battle uh, and I'm going to show you what he uses to control them if you see here on the box they're type of little kunai things they're basically tubes that he stores the demons in and he throws them out and they come out and they help him in battle and here is his sidekick uh, Goto he's basically his mentor in the game he gives him advice on investigations and such he follows him around and stuff and helps him out kind of like Morgana from Persona 5 but less annoying but um Goto's a little more serious so I'm gonna show you some more art on the box if you guys want to see it because I really do this is one of the boxes that I really like there he is with his sword with some green effects from it probably from um, summoning demons there's another shot of him on the side of the box there he is with his cat and then there's another nice vanilla shot of him right there so let's go ahead and open him up and see what we think and to note here he's also from D Arts from the Bandai Tomashi Nations line so here we go so here is the figure out of its box um, it took me a little while to take him out of the box because this is a brand new figure actually. I was able to get him brand new off of eBay for a decent price. I got him for 50 bucks. Um, so it was pretty good that I found him for brand new at such a decent price because this figure is pretty old. As you can see here, he still has his plastic on him. He's a little dusty. But um, I'm going to show you his accessories real quick. So here he comes with his cape that you can take off. And I'll take it off later for the sake of the review. But it looks really nice. I'm really impressed with this figure. So I'm going to put him aside and show you his accessories. Here is that green smoke that can go on his sword. And here's all the accessories he comes with. Two open hands. Two hands to hold the gun. Two hands to hold a sword. I'm guessing these are hands that hold the tubes. And then here's two fists with the tubes where the demons are. And then here's his scabbard and his sword. And there's Goto again, so I'm gonna take him out real quick. Uh, looks like I forgot to take off some tape here. Yeah, this is mint condition. I'm gonna do this off camera real quick. All right, so I got his accessories open. Let's take a look at Goto. He's nicely sculpted, just a plain black cat with green eyes. He's stuck in one pose, but you know, you don't really need to pose a cat that much. So I'm gonna put him right there. And let's take a look at his scabbard. There you go. Very nicely painted. Um, and I'm guessing that this is a piece for it to go on the, uh, the belt here and then it does come off so you can give it the illusion that he took his sword out when he does have it out and then 
here is his sword. Standard silver paint. Let's see how that looks on him. So I'm guessing it just clicks on right here. A little hard to get in there because this is a new figure so might need to heat that up a little bit but it does go there so there you go and let's put his scabbard on well I'm gonna leave it off to make it look like you know he he took his sword out and then we have his other accessories I'm just gonna dump this out just cuz here are his two tubes. And then we have the hands that are actually holding them. These are a nice touch. We got uh, two hands for the gun, two plain open hands here, and then uh, two open hands to hold a sword. I'm going to put the sword in his hand real quick fits very nicely and then here's his gun just a standard revolver decent paintwork now let's put it on his holster here fits pretty nicely and if you notice here he actually does uh, he does have his Kuzanoha tubes on his his uniform this is where he takes them out to throw them and to summon them. So they're right there. I'm gonna go ahead and pop his head off so we can take off the cape and take a closer look at it. It's standard plastic. It's not that hard and it's not that heavy, but I'm planning to make a cloth cape for him so he could just have it. So he won't always be in this windswept pose, which I do like. I do like the windswept windswept pose it's kind of like the zero cape from code kiosk I do like it it's pretty detailed with all the wrinkles in there so it's it's decent it's nice let's take a look at him without the cape so here he is Raido Kuzanoha and I've got to say it's just it's really nice his design is very simple and very clean it's not really complicated that much he's just wearing his uh, here's his ammo for his uniform uh, he's just wearing this um, vest for his Kuzanoha tubes and his school uniforms underneath and there he has his single pointed cap with the school on, on the top of his uh, cap so it's very uh, very simple design but it's it's so clean. It looks exactly like the game. Let's take a closer look at his details on his his uniform here. Got his belt with all the little loops and the buckle and his buttons on his shirt. And then we have his revolver, which I already showed you. There's his mag bullets. Not really mags or bullets. And then uh, here's his tubes. And then his shoes are shiny black like dress shoes. Let's take a look at his face. He didn't come with any alternate faces and honestly I'm kind of glad that they didn't because if you know the character he doesn't really make any other faces. He's pretty emotionless. He's just kind of he's always stern and quiet kind of guy. He's serious all the time. He doesn't really smile. He smiles sometimes but not really. Oops, almost broke the fourth wall there showing you my other room. So he doesn't really, you know, he's also silent either. He doesn't talk. If you know about the Shin Megami Tensai games, the protagonist never talks in the game, but you don't hear his voice, but he does talk, obviously, but you don't hear the voice for some reason. That's just how the games are because you can control their responses. You can control what they say. You can control their choices out the game, throughout the game, so... It makes it easier for them, I guess, to not give him a voice, but he's serious all the time. 
and then we have his signature sideburns here. So that's a nice detail. That's what makes him unique because he has these pointy sideburns on the side of his head and his hair and then the little tassel on the back of his head. So now that I showed you pretty much everything about him, let's just go into the articulation. His arms go all the way out, all the way up. There you go. So it's pretty articulated here, and it does have that up to down motion. If you pull on it, you can pull it down. Then he has a single jointed elbow, which gets you a pretty much a double joint right there. And then his hand does swivel, and it does come off. Let's take off his hand real quick. Put on his sword. Pops off pretty easily, and it probably pops on easy too. So let's see. Yep, pretty easy. Uh, and then he doesn't really have that much diaphragm. I guess this is the first time I'm actually looking at it. So let's see. He does have one, but it's very stiff. It moves back and forth that much. Uh, the other thing about him is he doesn't really get into that much poses. He just kind of fights with his sword and shoots with his gun and summons his demons. So he doesn't really do that much agile stuff. He's very swift and nimble on his feet, so you don't really see him like jumping. And he's just very smooth with his attacks. So, I mean, I could see why they didn't really give him that much range of motion here. Or it could be the fact that it's a brand new figure and I didn't heat it up this time for the video. Usually when I buy new figures, I get hot water and I heat them up. So when I pose them and stuff, they don't break. Sometimes new figures do break when they come out of the box. So I probably need to do that. We didn't look at his head articulation yet, but from, from looking at it right now, it looks really good. He looks all the way down. That far. Not really all the way up, but he does look up. And then he does go side to side. And it is on the standard ball, like most of those figures are. So you don't really need him to look around all the way, but as long as you have like a decent range, then that's all should that's all you should be worried about. Because if you don't have at least good range making him look down and up, then I would be worried, but that's not the case with this figure. He looks pretty good. Now his shirt here is like a soft plastic, kind of hard on the back, but just a little soft so he can get kind of a give when he lifts up his legs. His legs go all, almost all the way up. The articulation is there, but his uniform prohibits the leg from going all the way up, but that's okay. So it goes that much. I don't really need that much. You just need a kind of a a decent leg motion to bend his leg right there. Something like that. You don't really need his leg to go all the way forward, but it does go pretty much almost all the way back. Not really. It doesn't it swivel. It does swivel here. You can do that SH figure arts thing, bring it up and down. He does have a single jointed knee joint. They hit it pretty well. It doesn't look that bad when you bend his knee, so it's pretty good. And then his feet articulation, he does have a nice ankle rocker and an ankle pivot. Goes all the way up, all the way down, and side to side. Then we also get some extra toe hinge, and that toe hinge is really nice. It goes all the way back. Why we would ever need that, I don't know, but it's still nice to have. So all in all, um, being that this is my first reaction to owning this figure, it's really, really nice. The articulation is pretty standard. It's, you know, it's nothing special. It's almost like the Figma articulation. Just the only thing that I could say my first um, critique would be for them to make the plastic here a little softer because it's too hard and it kind of makes it harder for me to lift his leg up. But the legs do move decently. I probably just need to heat it up. So you can still get him into like a, a battle pose if you need to. If 
that's what you're trying to do in your photo. You can still kind of make him stand like that. And the arm articulation is really good too. The head moves nicely. Let's see what he looks like with the cape. Cape, he looks better. Whoops. His head went flying. Here he is with this cape. With this cape, obviously, he looks way better. The cape doesn't really make it that heavy. He can still stand pretty nicely and not fall over. So, my final thoughts. I love this figure. This figure is dope. It's so tight. Let's see how he looks with his gun. Let's see how he holds it actually. See if it's good enough. So there is a trigger hand here. Let's see if the finger goes in act inside the actual trigger. Not quite. Let's see. trigger hand has a little little bit of an issue getting inside there but it's decent enough let's see how it looks on him whoops his head wasn't on all the way in that was my fault there you go there's his gun Gotta say, that looks really good. Here's another hand that I forgot to show you guys. He's just holding two more tubes here. Like he's ready to throw them with one hand. Because he does do that in the game, he'll throw it. And here's something I wanted to do really quick. I wanted to recreate the pose he does in the game when he summons the demons. There he is with the tubes, kind of almost similar to the box art. Almost there, just gotta get a better angle. But as far as the box art, he looks just like it. Not too far off. His skin's a little paler on the box, but it would look really weird if he was that that pale because he is pretty pale but I don't remember him being like skin white in the game one more thing I want to show you before the video I forgot to show you his sword and how it looks with the smoke on it I believe you just kind of slipped the sword into the slit right here to make it look oh it's on this side there you go slides in pretty nicely it's a nice effect really cool effect here he is next to Goto here he is next to the protagonist from Persona 5 Oops, fell over. Pretty much the same size. Fun fact, um, Shin Megami Tensei um, is also, Persona is part of Shin Megami Tensei. It's a sub-series. And Raidu Kuzunoha, Devil Summoner, is in the same universe as Persona. So um, the companies are related. The game is made by Atlas. So Persona is part of that series. And what's really cool is in Persona 5, you can actually buy the Raido Kuzunoha DLC and you can play as the protagonist in his uniform, in, in Raido's uniform. So that's a, just a fun fact for those of you who are a fan of the series. And that concludes my review slash unboxing. Um, hope you guys liked it. It was not scripted. Kind of just went with it and showed you everything. Another thing I forgot to show you is 
this piece here this is another piece of the scabbard that goes on to I'm guessing here I don't know why there's an extra one because there's two does this come off it doesn't come off not really sure why that's there but I'll find out but that concludes my review thank you guys for sticking around and checking it out hope you guys were interested in the game and the character and I hope I provided some good info on it in case you want to play it and if not, that's cool too. Thanks for sticking around. See you guys in my next video.